I'm sure you've all seen me play at Champions Club in Houston before, but I bet you didn't know that Phil Hellmuth, the legend himself, is a part owner. That's right, Phil is here today in the flesh to participate in some high stakes 25, 50, 100 poker action on the Champions Club livestream. It's an absolute honor to meet Phil as we exchange hellos and a bit of friendly smack talk. Wolfgang, it's really great to have you here, and I know that you have brought, uh, I'm proud of what you're doing for poker. You're bringing a lot of heat to the game. Thanks, Phil. You excited? It'll be a pleasure to uh, slow roll you and put it on the internet for millions of people to view. <laughs> you gotta come back with that, huh? Yeah. What the f I'm buying in for $15,000 of my very own money today, and I'm ready to risk it all as many times tonight I get put to the ultimate test by my opponents all in. In the very first hand, we see a $100 straddle put on and Blez opens it up to $400. Pretty big sizing already. I look at ace-10 offsuit from the cutoff and decide not to three bet, instead just putting in the call, we are going heads up to the flop. When the flop comes 8-8-6 eight, eight, with two spades, Blez decides to go for a C bet. Ace high might be good here, so I decide to put my money where my mouth is, put in the call, and let the opponents know that today you're gonna have to bet on multiple streets in order to get me to fold. If we weren't already ahead on the flop, the 10 of clubs on the turn definitely solidifies the opponent's fate. Blez checks it over to me for a second time, and now I have an option between betting for value and protection. We don't want a king, queen, or jack to come on the river. And also, I could check behind, allow him to bluff on the river, and snap it off. I decide that the first play is the best in case he has a draw, like a spade draw or a straight draw. I want to charge him the maximum also with a six, so I fire out for $1,100 and Blez came to play. He puts that money from all those sports card boxes he's been breaking on his website in the middle. That's probably coming over to me and the river now comes the 10 of diamonds. Now we fill up with a boat on the river. All right, that would be tens full for Wolfgang. It's a $4,000 pot and Blez checks over me for a second time. Would you guys go super large here like three to 5K or do you go small in the one to 2K range? I decide to pay my respects to 21 Savage, fire out for a $2,100 bet on the river. Blez cannot put in the call with his 6-4 of hearts. And we are taking down quite literally hand number one, a $6,200 pot is just what the doctor ordered. I know you're a big 21 Savage guy. I don't even know who it is. <laughs> It's only fitting that I show you guys Phil Hellmuth's first hand of the night since I hyped him up so much in the intro. It's a race to 300 from Cantu, Blez three bets to 1300, and Hellmuth decides to rip his entire stack all in. He's playing a cash game, but don't tell him that. He's playing tournament poker style here. He counts out his big blinds, rips it all in the middle, king, queen offsuit, snap call by Blez's kings. And I bet you guys know how this one plays out. <laughs> Tell me he's only to rebuy. Surprisingly, the $100 straddle is not on in this hand. I make it 150 to go, and Blez decides just to defend from the big blind instead of putting in that three bet from out of position. When the flop comes 7 6 3 with two clubs, Blez checks it over to me. I decide to check back. Not exactly the best board in the world. Should favor the blinds over myself from late position. Just like the first hand I played against Blez, the turn comes the 10 of spades. He now donks into me small for $200. I think my ace high might be good. I could just call, I could fold. I decide to put in the money. Are we seeing the exact same hand? Look at that, a 10 on the river running 10s, and now he slows down and checks. I think ace high has some showdown value here. There's no point in turning my hand into a bluff. Let's get to a cheap showdown. I check behind, Blood says he has king high, and we show the ace high float on the turn, gets rewarded, taking down the second hand of the night versus Blez. But don't worry, he fights back in a few other hands later on in the vlog. All right, hand number 30, I raise up pocket fives from the plus three position to $150. Poker Mama, Cantu, and Blez all put in the call. We're going four ways to the flop, which comes 943 Rainbow. We have second pair. Multi way, it's best to start with a check here. I have some showdown value, so I'm trying to get to a cheap river. Poker Mama decides to bet out for $300, and Cantu puts in the call. Blez is gone with the wind. I decided to put in the call as well. We're now three ways to the turn, which comes the Jack of Diamonds. There's absolutely no world in which I'm leading on this turn. The only hands I could see myself doing that with are maybe Ace-5 of Diamonds exclusively, or maybe Pocket Jacks if I picked up a set on the turn. But I check and flow over to Poker Mama, who decides to give up and check. Cantu checks behind in the river, now comes the Eight of Clubs. Whole bunch of nothing here, it checks through. I turn over Pocket 
fives and we beat ace high and a pair of fours from Cantu on the button. Blez raises the plus three to $200 and Jay White puts in the call. I looked down at ace queen suited from the small blind and decided to come in for a large raise all the way up to $1,000. Because I'm in the small blind, I'll be out of position the rest of the way, so I like a large sizing here of 5X. Blez puts in the call. Jay White has the snazzy jacket on, but he's saving his money for another one of those, folds his cards, and the flop comes ace, jack, deuce. Pretty great board for my hand, my range, all of the above, so I decided to go small here. It's gonna be hard for Blez to have a better hand. Ace Jack or Pocket Jacks exclusively would be the two hands that we are worried about. But when I bet out for $300 and he doesn't raise me, just puts in the call, the deuce of hearts peels off on the turn and I think another small bet is in order. I'm trying to extract maximum value from a middling pocket pair or a hand like King Jack, Jack 10, Queen Jack, something like that. $500 seems to be the right amount until Blez folds, but he only had pocket sixes, so I don't blame him for putting any more money in the middle. This Blez character is a super cool guy. He got exclusive rights to open Top's Finest a day before they came out to the general public. He has a massive YouTube channel where he breaks sports cards and he decided to give a few boxes away to people at the table and open up a few packs himself. Super good for the hobby, I love sports cards. And uh, what's better than gambling on poker when you're gambling on box breaks as well? Each one of these boxes is worth around $350 just for you guys that are in the dark about collecting cards. After Blez and Helmuth break a box that uh, turns out to have really nothing of importance in it, we're back over to the poker. We then put the knit game on for $250 a pop, so if we lose this, it's around $2,000 we'd have to pay out. But no fear, we look down at pocket queens from the straddle. Wolfgang actually finds two queens here. Wow. What a dream. Spelled out. It's gonna look like a huge bluff. What an absolute dream. There's a raise from Blez, 8-6 offsuit from the button, and Jay White puts in the call with a 7 offsuit. He's the only other player left in this knit game against myself. Of course, I'm gonna go large here. I just wanna get this over with. And if one of these two hooligans wants to put $4,200 in the middle, well, they can do it from behind. But when I make it 4,200, Jay White and Blez both fold. We take down a $5,700 pot, get rid of our knit button, and uh, we're feeling pretty great about that. All right, this is definitely one of the best hands of the night, so you wanna pay attention in this one. Blez from the plus three makes it $400 to go over a Poker Mama raise from under the gun. So already some interesting dynamics here. Poker Mama, a fairly snug player, but she'll get out of line once in a while, but she's under the gun, so when she raises, has a pretty strong range. When Blez three bets that instead of just calling, I expect his range to be pretty strong as well. But look what I have, King Queen of Diamonds from the small blind. It's definitely a good candidate to put in a four bet, even though there's been a lot of strength so far. I decided to go 1150 and I'll fold to any five bet or shove, but luckily Poker Mama folds her under the gun holding and Blez just puts in the call so her heads up, out of position to a flop, which gives us good news, King 8-7 with two hearts, we flop top pair. 2,500 in the middle, heads up against Blez, and I go small here for around one third, $750. Blez with a mystery hand now decides to raise me to $3,000. What kind of hands would he be doing this with? Well, his value would be hands like pocket eights, pocket sevens, maybe king eight suited if he's frisky enough to be three betting that against Poker Mama's open, but we're gonna exclude that for now, so it's pretty much just eights and sevens. His draws are any of the heart draws, for instance, jack 10 of hearts, or maybe ace five of hearts, ace 10 of hearts, stuff like that, as well as some straight draws like jack 10 and uh, six five suited. So when he raises me up here, there's a lot of draws and only really a few hands that I'm worried about, I put in the call. When the turn comes, the ace of clubs should be a much better card for myself than Blez, but now he goes into the tank. He's thinking for a while what he wants to do. There's nearly $9,000 in the middle. And after a long pause, he says those dreaded two words, all in. It's a polarizing shove. It's nearly $14,000. He has me covered. I have 13.6K in my stack. It's an overbet on this turn. And now we are playing for every chip we have in front of us. That's what makes good players like Blez good players. They just put you to the test. Could he have a draw here? Absolutely. But could he just 
just have a hand like ace 10 of hearts and just got there on the turn would calling off 13.6k be a huge punt in this spot i don't think it'd be a huge punt but i don't think it's the right move blez is definitely capable of running an airball bluff but at the same time there's just a lot of hands he could have that have me beat all of those suited aces now catch up on the turn pocket eights pocket sevens the only question is, would he be shoving with just an ace on the turn? It's hard to say. I haven't played with Blez too often, but he's a fun player. So I think if he just spiked an ace on the turn, he'd get all of his money in. After a little bit of debate, I decided to fold my cards. It's a massive overbet on the turn, and I just can't hold on with my pair of kings. I fold my cards, and he had jack nine of hearts. He didn't show it to the table, but we're obviously on a live stream, so I can see it now. He had 27% equity in this, but he's winning a 100% of the pot. I posted this hand on my Instagram as a reel and did a poll as to what you guys thought he had. And let's just say not many people would have made the call because everyone was putting him on a set or two pair. That just shows you how hard these high stakes games are. Even when it looks like an obvious call to the viewer who can see the cards face up, it's tough to put $13,000 in the middle, especially when I'm on no stake, it's all my own money. But when you play one big pot, another one is surely soon to follow. Three coin raises a plus one to 225, Jay White puts in the call. I look down from the dealer button with my knit button in front of me, we put that game back on so I'm incentivized to come in for a nice hefty raise here with ace jack of clubs I make it $900 to go Randy decides to continue he has his knit button in front of him as well Jay White calls from the hijack three ways to the flop we go which comes ace jack seven bang we flop top two ace jack seven all the all them both gang flops top two checks over to me against three players I decide to go for a half pot size bet three coin now check raises me to three thousand dollars it's a min click and uh, Jay White gets out of the way. Top two pair here on a flush and straight heavy board. I could come in for another raise, but I think in position here, I have a lot of reasons to just call Randy. So that's what I do. I toss in another $1,600. We're playing an $8,800 pot and the turn comes a nine of hearts. After taking a sip of my delicious mango Moscow mule, we get some bad news. Randy decides to check it over to me. Maybe I should have raised the flop. Hopefully he's not giving up. He checks it over to me and now I'm thinking about how to get all the money in the middle. I have 9,400 in my stack. There's 8,800 in the middle. I think a shove here would be a little bit too aggressive. So the question is, do I want to go small here for like 2,500 to 3,500 and then put the rest in on the river? Or do I want to go larger here like five to 7K and then have a trivial two to 3K bet on the river left behind? Well, I'm leaning towards going small until Randy decides to tell me some interesting information. I'll be into it. Wolfgang, I'll say this. I'm going to mirror whatever you do next. I will no mirror way. it. No way. Yeah, I will. Whatever you do, I, I will mirror it. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, you guys heard the man. What would you do in this spot? He's gonna match whatever I do. Well, the only question is, do you guys believe Randy? If you do, it's a no-brainer decision. You gotta put all the money in the middle. He could have a straight draw or a flush draw, or he could just have a worse ace and call off. So, I believe Randy. I think he's gonna match whatever I do. I rip my entire stack in the middle for 9,400, and he snap calls. A man of his word, you gotta love Randy. We still don't know what he has, and he has pocket kings. He decided to raise the flop on an A side board and then snap call an overbet on the turn with pocket kings. These games in Texas are amazing. Shout out to Three Coin. Go check his merch out if you want to support the guy. But uh, right now, it's looking like we are in a great spot. 95% chance to win a $27,000 pot. Last year, that would have been incredible for me to say. But these days, it's just becoming standard. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. We still have to fade the river, which we do. It comes the five of hearts. Randy's fate is sealed. Pocket Kings down in flames. Ace Jack of Clubs taking down a $27,000 pot in hand number 79. Let's go. And Wolfgang was, wins the biggest pot of the cash festival. More than $27,000 being shipped his way. And it's only fitting in my biggest hand of the night, Phil Helmuth has to chirp in and give his opinion on how I played the hand. It's so good, tell me, tell me how you knew. Cause I was chatting? I mean, it's, 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 when I play with people that don't play every day for 20 years, 
they'll, they'll get sometimes they get really excited and you were really excited and engaged you made a speech on the flock where you said i'm just gonna be check raised all the time and i'm like oh my god he must have an three aces he's listening even when he's not even the hand he's picking up info on me and i'm like oh my god why would he ever say that he must have the nuts that's why he's the best this is so all three coin brand but i mean <laughs> <laughs> That last hand was a real full circle moment for me. I won a $27,000 pot and then Phil Helmuth, one of the guys that I used to watch religiously on YouTube, every day I'd watch his funny rants. My favorite being the idiot from Northern Europe one, but he decided to give me a rant of his own and it just shows you how cool this YouTube channel has been to me. We're in big games, we're playing against legends that I used to watch growing up and then they're engaging with me as well. Just a really cool experience and one I'll never forget. Well, I won't forget this one as well. I'm in the small blind with pocket at Queens is a raise and two calls ahead of me. How could this get any better? Well, it's not going to get any better. Phil Helmuth folds 8-3 off. He's not going to play that blackjack type double down hand. I decide to come in for a three bet. I make it 1750 and everybody folds. So taking down $1,000 worth of profit and moving into hand number 94 where I look down at pocket kings and make it $500 to go. Jay White decides to put in the call for an additional $400 out of the small blind and the flop comes ace nine five. It seems that every time you have pocket kings, there's an ace on the flop. The dreaded ace high flop when you have kings. But I'm gonna bet my range here. I'm gonna have a lot of ace king, ace queen, ace five, pocket nines. So I decide to go for the same bet, $500 and Jay White obliges when the turn comes to three of spades the action goes check check i'm a little distracted opening a box of tops finest hopefully we get some good stuff out of this box but back to the poker the river comes the five of spades jay white decides not to check it over to me instead goes for a small sizing of you guessed it 500 dollars. nothing for me to do other than call the price is just way too good even though i have second pair and he easily could have a five or an ace i decide to call he turns over nine seven of hearts for second pair and we're taking down a $3,100 pot. All right, last hand of the night. Hand number 99 is sure to be a good one, I promise you guys. But before we get into it, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. The next vlog will be the exact same cast, crew, all the above. Phil Helmuth will be there, 2550, and I don't want you guys to miss it. So if you guys like this video and you wanna see another one like this, please hit the subscribe button. And now let's get into the hand. I make it $400 to go with Ace Deuce of Diamonds. And let's see how many customers we pick up. We're gonna get two, Blaze and Woodley, both decide to put in the call and the flop comes queen, jack, four with one diamond. Action checks over to me in flow and I go for a $550 bet around half the size of the pot. I'm gonna have more of the pocket queens and pocket jacks here, so I'm not afraid to bet into two other opponents. We only pick up one customer, that's Blez, and the turn comes the king of diamonds. It's a welcome card, now any 10 on the river gives me Broadway, any diamond on the river gives me the nut flush, and Blez checks it over to me once again. When he calls the flop, he could have a jack or a queen, maybe two pair or a set of fours, but if I'm gonna bet, instead of checking and trying to realize my equity, I like a large sizing, trying to get him to fold a better hand than mine, for instance, pocket tens, jack 10, maybe a hand like ace jack would even find a fold on this turn, I go $1,550, but does Blez fold? Absolutely not. He decides to call. We're gonna need a miracle card on the river, and it comes a queen of diamonds. Bang, we river the nut flush. The only caveat is the board is paired. What hands would we be losing to? Well, pocket fours that decides not to raise a turn is one type of hand. Maybe he has a hand like queen jack, or maybe king queen that decided not to four bet me preflop, but all that thought goes out the window when he doesn't check it and flow over to me once again, but instead decides to donk bet into me for $2,000. Now, the question is, I have the nut flush, but the board is paired. Do you guys like a small raise here, or would you just call, not wanting to risk any more money in case he has a boat? I think the second option is a mistake. You wanna raise here, and then if he comes in for another raise, well, you're in a tough decision, and you'll probably have to fold. But I think getting value versus any king, any queen having three of a kind, worse flushes and some straights is definitely the right move. You wanna go small here, you don't need to go super large, because you have one of the best hands that you could have on this river, so I don't think going large is gonna get you paid off a large percentage of the time. I decided to go two and a half X to $5,500 and Blez is in the tank. Let's finally expose what hand he is debating calling or folding here with. And he has queen 10 with a 10 of diamonds. A lot of interesting things to note about his hand. Obviously he has three of a kind, but the 10 of diamonds blocks a lot of hands that he doesn't want me to have. For instance, ace 10 and 10 nine both have him beat and the 10 of diamonds blocks both of those. 
Additionally, the 10 of diamonds blocks some flushes, so I think that's a pretty good card for him to have, and I think he's more likely to put in the call than fold. But after a little bit of debate, he shows Phil Hellmuth, and then folds his cards. He folds trips. I guess maybe I don't have too many bluffs on this exact river, so he finds the very good fold with three of a kind. I don't show it, obviously. I can't reward him for making that big fold. An ace deuce of diamonds hits the river, the very last hand of the night in a $13,000 pot. That's right, I was the big winner of the night. I won over $20,000 in this $25.50, basically a 100 game with Phil Hellmuth at the table. He had a front row seat to me winning $20,000 which is a pretty cool moment for myself. Yeah, hey, Let's go. Hey. I'll see you tomorrow. You played really, really, really well. Oh, you'll see me tomorrow, Phil. I'm not surprised. I haven't slow rolled you yet. Nah. nah. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see me play Phil Hellmuth in the next episode coming out in a few days. There's a few other videos on your screen right now. Click one of those if you want to continue watching. And as always, good luck on the felt. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.